Hey guys, this is Pablo with Meditation Amsterdam. It's Friday afternoon and I thought I could close the work week with a video about the traps that the ego creates when it comes to our ability to feel love and our desire to be in contact with that feeling uh, when we don't feel it. And in order to get into the topic uh, which is, by the way, a kind of complementary follow-up of the video I made about magic uh, in the last um, uh, in the last publication. Um, it's probably good to call out from the get-go the kind of thing that the ego does to keep us um, engaged with its operations and to not let go of overthinking and uh, the uh, perverted use of our imagination and our memory. So you may notice that every time we engage in thinking, planning and imagining things, whether it comes to things that we hope to uh, uh, that we hope for in the future or that we reminisce about from the past, they um, all these scenarios point to a feeling of being completely satisfied, completely at peace, uh, completely joyful, and um, if we're really ambitious about it, really uh, feeling an all-encompassing feeling of love, unconditional love. And it's interesting because what's on offer is in fact quite real, as I mentioned in uh, in my last video. So so. The ineffable and uh, the experience of non-duality and complete love is really on offer, and it it kind of serves as a hook for the ego to then start to uh, convince us of the fact that if we only do the right things, that we will be able to experience that in the future. And this video is about noticing that the moment we buy into the possibility of future love, we have, by that very act, uh, separated ourselves from the immersive nature of the current experience, which is where love is to be found. And so um, you could think of it as making a very clear-cut distinction between allowing the present experience to catch you and to uh, invade you, if you will, and that invasive nature and that, that all-enveloping nature, once fully felt, is the experience of love, which is unconditional. It's just a complete being in contact with whatever is versus something that can be achieved in time. And whatever can be achieved in time is conditional. And you start to get a feel for this because whenever the operations of the ego begin, and if you have developed the sensitivity for what it feels like to, to be an ego or to be in identification with the content of the thinking mind, what you will feel is the absence of love. And that absence, the more we use the mind to try to eliminate it by creating future scenarios, the more that absence can be felt. Um, it is almost as if the ego dangles a carrot, the carrot of an outcome, the outcome of love in the future. And what is really on offer in the future is validation and um, gratification. So you could uh, train yourself, uh, first of all, by trying to understand these on a, uh, on a conceptual level and then see how that matches with your experience. And notice that whenever you are uh, posing a future scenario in your mind that delivers something, if you look close enough, that something which is delivered is not love it is some sort of gratification or validation which will feed the ego. And 
the ego pretends or, or the, the, the supposed carrot that is being dangled in, uh, in front of you is, um, is presented as the feeling of love and joy and peace, but really is just gratification because it's in time and it's condition. So um, this goes actually pretty far if you think about it, not because what I explained in particular is that, uh, is that special, although it can be quite uh, revelatory uh, if, if it hasn't been noticed that clearly. But it goes very far in the sense that we start to notice that every single thing we have ever wished for is therefore only gratifying and validating and not loving in reality. You, you can only wish for gratification, in other words. You can only wish for validation, in other words. Love cannot be wished for in the future. It cannot be acquired in the future. And there are no conditions that need to be fulfilled. Rather, we need to come to terms with the fact that there are present barriers that prevent the now from being imbibed in the way that it is. And that those barriers indeed are uh, getting in the way of the experience of love, peace and joy right here and now. That seems to be a bit of a paradox because you could then say, well, I then wish for those barriers to disappear uh, in the future. That would be kind of a already the ego trying to squeeze into this whole thing. Um, whereas the real operative move is to notice that the barriers are there and the very noticing of the barriers and the acceptance of the barriers as part of what the present moment is like, ironically, gets you completely in touch with the now. And that is the experience of love, which doesn't necessarily mean that you are having a likable experience uh, um, based on what the ego considers to be gratifying or validating. Um, meaning that love is um, love allows for displeasure to be uh, part of the experience. That is the only real way to touch love uh, is to remove preference or filtering of experience from the equation. That filtering is never really real, by the way. Experience is never really filtered out. It's only ever suppressed into the unconscious. It's still there. Uh, but the ego makes us believe that to exercise preference is what is going to get us love in the future, where in reality all we're trying to uh, acquire is more pleasant experiences. Actual love is only ever experienced in the now through the non-suppression of experiences that we consider to be less than uh, less than pleasurable or less than desirable. Um, and again, this goes very far because to realize that love can't be conditional means that any preference in any direction for anything whatsoever can never really be considered love and it can be a bit of a scary thought if you take this all the way through for example i i, I would say or you could go as far as to say that any sort of exclusivity in the direction in which we point our love and full acceptance is already an egoic move that cuts us away from the actual um, experience of love, if we can, if we can even call it an experience, which is more more of a uh, a state of mind or a or a state of being, a, a fundamental platonic form of being, if you will. Um, this conditional fav favoritism is not love, and it is incredibly prevalent in everything that we say and do, and it, I think, and. I'm going to just put this out there. It's not something that I have thought through very well, but I'll, I'll put it out there for whatever it's worth. I think it is very prevalent 
and it eats away at our belief that we are fundamentally lovable. And I'll explain why. Our parents love us conditionally, not even because they have conditions of if you behave this way or that, then I'll love you. They love us conditionally for being their kids. <laughs> Isn't this funny? Uh, like I said, I haven't thought this through, but I think it's in a bit of a, an adventurous thought experiment. Think about it. Our parents don't love us the way they love other kids. Now, there may be other kids out there that have better traits or traits that come closer to what would be ob objectively lovable, but they love us in a special kind of way, in a, in a conditional favoritism, sort of favoritist type of way. And if I was to ask my parents, hey, but don't you love those kids too? They would say, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're fine. You know, yeah, of course, it's all good and great. We all, you know, love each other, like, like Jesus said, but, but we love you more. Not because you're better, but because you are our kid. Meaning that if you weren't, they wouldn't love you. You would be as irrelevant as every other child out there. And that implies that you're not intrinsically lovable. You are conditionally lovable. And we're not even, as I said, going into behavior of like, oh, you know, if you, if you do the way, if you do things the way we like, then we love you and otherwise not this whole sort of conditional love to, type of thing. No, it's even a more fundamental type of condition in which because we are related by blood, that makes it so that we've made you special. And if that wasn't the case, then where's the reason really to make you special and therefore, therefore lovable? And I believe that that creates already a very insidious um, conditional type of thing. And that's why blood bonds are so strong. It's like, you know, you love blood and we stick by blood and, uh, you know, the bonds uh, of the family are the strongest or whatever. Because if not for that, you're just another Joe whoever who, you know, has nothing intrinsically lovable about him. And that's very scary, of course. You don't want to be that. You don't want to be random. So you cling to blood because that'll guarantee that at least you're, you're, you're loved for that, if nothing else. Uh, so our conditionality in love is very, very uh, embedded in the way that we uh, dash it out, right? And, and who do we love depends on what they mean to us as opposed to considering things and animals and people intrinsically lovable. And I believe that as a child, we can kind of see through that. We may not be able to put our finger on it directly, but we cling to our parents not only for sustenance, but also for this emotional, um, emotional sustenance as well, which we know that we would probably not get if we were, um, if, if we didn't have that bond in the first place. It's a hell of a thing to, to think about. Uh, I don't even know what to make of it just yet. I'm, I'm, this is a kind of fresh idea that popped up in my mind yesterday, which I thought was worth sharing um, for whatever it was worth, um, because I believe it's in, 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 in line of this whole uh, conditional, uh, conditional love topic. And, and, and the topic of, of this idea that love doesn't really take time and is not conditional, it's not based on conditions, such as being someone's child. Um, now, we've talked about the topic of love taking no time, requiring, not, requiring no conditions. We've talked about this sort of exclusivity or favoritism that we typically apply in the way that we uh, grant love um, and, uh, and so on. And I wanted to close this video by linking back to the video about magic because um, it struck me as interesting that in the topic of, of magic, I made a very big deal about being able to trust our intuition and our heart of hearts once we have validated that our heart's longing for uh, magic in our lives or, or the mystical in, in our lives is a real longing and that there is a there there when it comes to uh, mysticism. And it seems to me that this is very, very important as well when it comes to the topic of 
love because we can't really feel love lest we learn to come to fully trust and allow our direct experience. Without that, without that trust, which is nothing other than self-trust or translates into practical self-trust, the ability to love can't be there because direct contact with our experience is what love actually is. So you could almost say that trust and love for, di for direct experience are two sides of the same coin. And that we keep looking for love in experiences, otherwise in the content of experiences, and we're looking for love in experiences that fall on what I've always called the warm side of the pool, therefore pleasant experiences or pleasant people or people who belong to our exclusive circle of people we're supposed to love. Um, whereas real love falls more in the category of our capacity and willingness to fully surrender to every experience, to fully trust experience and be in touch with experience. And therefore, there is no difference between magic and love. There is no difference between love and trust for direct experience. So we're coming now full circle with this whole direct experience topic and linking what I called magic or mystical, the mystical experience in the previous video uh, and in touch with what I'm calling love now. And when you see it that way, then you directly know that that allowing of the direct experience in the current moment, when done enough into a certain level of depth and sustenance, reaches the mystical, it is made of love, and we realize that it never did require time, and that everything that required time was a conditional uh, state of affairs uh, that was really looking for um, gratification or validation, which is what the ego confuses for uh, the genuine article of love. So uh, as usual, I'm very curious what you guys make of this one. Um, I've been struggling as of late with what to focus on because it's almost like the fountain had just opened. There's a thousand ideas that I want to share uh, and I'm trying my best to structure them. So I hope that I'm not uh, be becoming too confusing or, or mixing things up too much. But do let me know what you guys make of this one in the, in the comments if you think that it was interesting. And as usual, um, if you think that this content is valuable and useful for others, then your liking, sharing and subscribing to the channel is making the content more available out there and is always very, very motivating to me. So thanks for watching. Thanks uh, to all the new subscribers that are coming in as of late. And I'll be back with more content pretty soon. Cheerio. Have a good weekend. and Bye bye.